coffee I have probably every day. Seriously, every day. Tomato, tomatoes. They are by far one of the most popular things to grow in the garden. They're relatively low maintenance, so that's good. But there are some things you can do now to make sure you can get the best yield come the end of summer. Garden guy Dale Kay joins us live with his tomato tips. Good morning, Dale. Good morning. Hands down, actually, the most popular veggie grown in the backyard. And although not technically a veggie, it is a fruit. Mm -hmm. No matter, it is the most popular planted in the vegetable garden. So here are my tips to ensure that you have a great harvest coming up later this summer and into fall. And let's do the numbers first. And firstly, you want to make sure that soil temperature is around or higher than 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's soil temperature, not air temperature. That's super important because you'll actually set your tomatoes back if you plant them too early. So right around Memorial Day weekend into this week is the perfect time to plant your tomatoes. Also, they like temperatures in that 80 degree range and then down to 60 to 70 degrees at night. And most importantly, they need about eight hours of sunlight per day. So really a super kind of a sun plant. They don't like a lot of shade. As far as uh, once you know the numbers, the next thing or the most important thing is selecting healthy plants. And you can do that quite simply by inspecting, um, by inspecting your plants, whether you started them from seed or whether you're buying them from the garden shop. Make sure there's none of this kind of this stuff going on. Um, make sure they are nice and green, nice and healthy, and the stems are quite sturdy as well. That's another indicator that the plants are healthy. Then it comes down to variety, and there are a lot to choose from. It's really kind of whatever you like to eat with these guidelines. If you like to grow your, or if you only have space to grow your tomatoes in a pot or you have a small space, I recommend a cherry type uh, tomato, a grape type, pear type, or like a little husky red type tomato they do quite well in pots and actually down here earlier this year I started some sweet 100s from seed and this plant is just super vigorous great for containers you can see it's just loaded with tomatoes already loaded with blooms and that is a great one not only for containers but a great one for salads as well so I always have a few of those then of course you go into your slicing tomatoes your Roma type your San Marzano types and then of course your heirloom types one tomato I want to actually point out I'm going to actually bang this in the ground today this is early girl if you're short on season say you live in northern Minnesota where the season is quite a bit shorter or you want to just start eating your homegrown tomatoes earlier early girl is a great variety to plant because it uh, it just gets to harvest sooner the most important thing from there is soil and you want to make sure you do your due diligence with soil preparation I always mix in some well rotted cow manure some compost and then also make sure that you have plenty of they are heavy feeders so make sure that you've got some good fertilizer as well and it really doesn't matter as long as it's organic and as long as it's great for veggies I actually use this coop poop that's really uh, that's really a great uh, pelletized fowl manure that's really good for tomatoes and really all your veggies so that's what I'm going to use but it doesn't really matter and then most importantly they do need staking some sort of staking I don't like cages those flimsy metal cages or even those sturdy cages because what happens is all the foliage tends to grow or stay contained within that cage and there's really a lack of air circulation that gets around the leaves and that can cause disease problems so even I, this one kind of came with the cage from the grower I, I would just snip I will snip that off and just put a stake in it and that's actually what I did with that pot right across the back there same plant just ditch the cage and then put a stake in it for air circulation you can run into problems with that if you're having problems with blossom end rot it's usually a calcium deficiency combined with um, kind of uneven watering so make sure that you're however you start to water your tomatoes make sure it's consistent that's super important and then if your soil is deficient in calcium that also accelerates blossom end rot so you can incorporate some calcium into your soil as well which is quite beneficial so I got my well rotted cow manure there and if you were watching last fall I actually kind of prepped this bed and did all that kind of composting and uh, mixing in uh, cow manure prior to the season so that's basically ready to go so I'm gonna get my early girl tomato and really whatever whatever tomato you're planting there's the soil depth that it is right now I always go really quite a ways up because that way it's nice and sturdy and it doesn't flop around too much so I'm going to plant them super deep you can see how deep that is there we go and then I'm just going to side dress with a little bit of that coop poop don't worry I'm going to wash my hands before I have brekkie there we go 
And then last but not least, you want to make sure that the soil doesn't splash around the leaves. So I actually have some nice uh, clean straw. And when you're buying straw that's labeled clean straw, it just means it's weed free because you don't want to put this around your veggie garden and have all those weeds kind of growing. So plant it deep, a little side dress of fertilizer, and then we're just going to tuck this in and around the leaves or the plant. So when you're watering or when we get those heavy rains. Oh, actually, we had a nice little sprinkle of rain here in Minota Heights this morning. That was quite nice. There we go. That'll stop soil splashing. That'll keep your plants nice and healthy. Do all those things. You won't be spraying or doing any of that monkey stuff. And of course, you'll have beautiful homegrown tomatoes. Back to you. Mmm, good stuff. Okay, I'm all for it. You have a tomato every day? Pretty much. I just have a you know, a obsession it. with no, tomatoes. No, that's great. I wish more in my family would. I can't have those plants because it's just me eating it, Dale. I'll just come to your house and grab a couple. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it, you. Dale.